go live now. So we'll do it again too. But we'll just we're gonna go. Hello, and thank you for joining us for Praxis Magazine. I'm Mary Liz Flavin. Today, we are looking at a variety of stories that showcase different aspects of the McAnulty College and Graduate School of Liberal Arts, as well as events that have taken place this semester. 29, 2023, Oakland Catholic and Central Catholic High School had active shooter threats that were later proven to be a hoax. High schools here in Pittsburgh and across the country were targeted by those same kinds of threats. I was on the scene in Oakland talking to parents and students. Both were frightened by what they had experienced. So we had 15 minutes of pure fear and then like reassurance and everybody else was probably at 40. Eve Majeska, a junior at Oakland Catholic High School, experienced the situation firsthand during her physics class. By staying in touch with her parents, she was able to be warned about the hoax prior to other classmates. Um, I mean, I'm relieved. I'm really angry. I think this was ridiculous. This should have never happened. I don't know why it would ever, but I think people are, I'm, I'm mad about it, but I'm, I'm glad that everything is okay and everyone is safe. On March 29th, 2023, Oakland Catholic was one of many schools in the area that were affected by false claims of active shooters. After going into lockdown, students were later ushered from both Oakland and Central Catholic into St. Paul's Cathedral, where they waited safely for their parents to arrive. So we were in communication as best as we could. Uh, as far as the school communicating, uh, I thought they did an excellent job. Uh, as soon as they received word, it seemed, uh, they communicated to us, parents, in a very professional manner. It was uh, clear that they had done some practice drills or at least had the scenario, you know, if this happens, what do we do? How do we communicate? What type of message do we put out? Uh, I thought they did an excellent job. Central Catholic parent Mike Kistler was first informed about the events taking place via a text message from another parent in the district. Not far from the school, Mike went to the scene where he saw fire trucks, police cars, and the SWAT team. One of his greatest concerns was communication with his son. However, he has one of those smart watches, and so he could, um, couldn't call or speak, but we could talk, or, you know, text. So he texted me, said he's okay. Um, he thought it was a drill, but then after it went a little bit longer than a few minutes, he figured it wasn't a drill. The event made national headlines, and many schools across the country were affected by the hoax threat. Here in Pittsburgh, Duquesne police were among the dozens of agencies keeping a close eye on the situation be able to move if we have to move somewhere. Absolutely. Duquesne University Police, just one of the many agencies on high alert that day. Again, no one was hurt that day and police have yet to identify the person or people responsible. Outside of their studies, many students need a break and treat themselves to something special on the bluff. This March, one organization was providing a much needed dose of retail therapy. Praxis reporter Emma Poland has more. The student union was busy with some mid-afternoon shopping as part of the Center for African Studies biannual African Marketplace. My name is Mara McDonough and I'm the management assistant in the Center for African Studies. We do these events pretty regularly. On March 22nd, vendors from across the city of Pittsburgh were invited to sell their diverse wares to students in the Union Atrium. Um, just to give the students a chance to do some retail therapy and relax. All the little patterns and colors and detail. Oh my goodness, and it matches your wallet like it's meant to be. Yeah, it does. For vendors like Paul Bernard, owner of P-Square Sense, this was a chance to market clean and sustainable products to college students. So our business is all about um, clean fragrances. We are a fragrance company. So everything on our table we do make in our store, but we don't use paraffin wax. We don't use a lot of the hidden chemicals that can cause nausea, headaches, and migraines. Other than candles, handmade crafts were also available at Songbird Artistry and 10,000 Villages. Those off-site sales and outreach coordinator, Jess Lovitz, had more to say. 
So we are a fair trade nonprofit store. We're located in Squirrel Hill, right on Forbes Avenue. And we partner with artists and groups around the world to ensure they earn a fair wage. We're here today for the African Studies Marketplace. So a lot of our products are made in uh, African countries, but we do have a lot of products from other countries as well. Um, and our products, they're all handmade. They're all sustainably sourced. Oftentimes they're made from recycled materials. These products here are actually made of these circuit boards from the computer. So of course you could make something with a pattern to make it look like it's made of that, but these are the actual items that are then recycled into. And we have a lot of products that you can see there, the keys and the bike chains and that sort of thing. Sustainability was a common theme among vendors who included city grows selling house plants. Senior English major Jessica Perry went home with a philodendron she named Nemesis. I always look forward to it every semester. I went last semester. The vendors there sell really nice stuff and they're always super friendly. I love the people there. There's not a lot of places to just shop at, at least here or even downtown. So it's nice to have an area that's right in the middle of Duquesne that we can do some shopping. <laughs> The Center for African Studies will continue to sponsor events throughout the remainder of the semester, which can be found on Campus Link. And the African market will return in the fall. This has been Emma Polin with Praxis Magazine. If you are looking for unique products, handcrafted goods, or something that's recycled and sustainable, look no farther than the African market. For more information on events like these, contact the Center for African Studies. Traffic is once again flowing on the Fern Hollow Bridge, 15 months after the important Squirrel Hill structure came crashing down. The long closure forced hundreds of people to take alternative routes and had a major impact on surrounding businesses. Those owners and motorists are grateful that the bridge is now back up and running, better than ever. And they tell me, what's ha and they tell me what has changed now that the bridge is open. For the thousands of people who use the Fern Hollow Bridge every day, the rebuilt structure couldn't have come at a better time. I commute. I come from South Hills, and this was like the really good alternate route for me, or going home, um, instead of like fighting traffic on the parkway. And um, so I'm, I'm, when I heard about that, I was shocked. The bridge collapsed in January of 2022, injuring 10 people, President Joe Biden used the Fallen Bridge as an example of our crumbling infrastructure. Hello, I'm Mary Flavin here with Praxis Magazine. Right behind me is the Fern Hollow Bridge, which is still under construction. Just months prior, Praxis Magazine reporter Bailey Martin was here covering the collapse. I'm here to tell you what's been happening between then and now. Several vehicles, including a Port Authority bus, stayed in the ravine for three days after the collapse, until a crane was able to retrieve them. In December of 2022, the bridge reopened to single lane traffic. Businesses were hit hard during this time. There were definitely, I do recall um, customers coming in and saying like, wow, with that bridge out, it takes so much longer to get here. Um, I feel like we did see a little bit of a spike in like online orders for shipment of like local people just because it was so hard to get kind of back and forth that people were more willing to pay the shipping even if they're local. More work has yet to be done, but is projected to be finished sometime in 2023. It's not just bridge work, however. There is an exciting project underway that will add to the experience of the trail. Karen Mintz Moyer's installation titled Trail Meanderer will consist of driftwood benches made from the fallen trees that surrounded the Fern Hollow Bridge in its collapse and river rock installations made from glass fiber reinforced concrete. The art commission is designed to allow people a place to rest and reflect as they walk along the trail. She hopes to complete this by fall of 2023. The installation is projected to be finished in the fall of 2023, where many people can enjoy the trail, take part, take a seat, and reflect on what has happened. You might notice a new addition to campus this semester, a very special community garden started by a Duquesne student with a community mission in mind. As Praxis Magazine reporter Emma Poland shows us, it's a fresh idea that's growing in popularity. Tony Carbino couldn't sit by when he discovered the absence of fresh produce in the Hill District. So these are all uh, medicinal herbs. Um, we've got cilantro here, we've got dill, we've got echinacea in the back. 
That's why the fourth-year bioengineering student began his indoor hydroponic garden. He was inspired by his experience with the Spiritans and with the Community Engagement Scholars Program through which Carbino served local residents in need. It was through that exposure and through that programming that I really came to understand the issue of food insecurity in our town and uh, the fact that you know one in five people of Pittsburgh are experiencing food insecurity and the unfortunate thing is that it's th the problem is deeper than food access and so as a Duquesne student as an engineering student I thought okay how can I make my education practical and how can I leverage my privileges and my uh, space and my community to help address this issue and help create equity. Students from schools all across campus are aiding in Carbino's Cor Unum or One Heart Garden. Carbino settled on the idea of indoor vertical gardens so that fresh food could be grown year round. The name Cor Unum, it comes from the Spiritan phrase Cor Unum et Anima Una, which means in one heart and one spirit. Above all things, above anything that I will ever do, it is ultimately important to me to be in one heart and one spirit with the community around me. When you shine your light out into the world, it subconsciously you know, allows others to shine theirs. And there's this, this beautiful interaction that comes about when you work with people and, and engage them. Well, there is still more to do, Carbino is grateful for the help he's received along the way. My message to people that have already helped is that you're wonderful and I could not ask for better people to work with. Every time I worry about the vision of this or I do not know how something's going to look, they just come in and like make it happen. Like It is an implicit trust that I have in them. Dr. Roberts from the Honors College, Lucy Jen Maggio uh, from Mission Engagement and Advancement, Dr. Sarah Wright, who's my faculty mentor for this project. So many people came together to help me with this uh, and help us to create this. So that's why when it came to designing the structures and painting them, that's why we did the fingerprints on it, because everyone who's touched the project should have a mark on there. Carbino says students can become involved in the project through volunteering, and he's always looking for funding to expand his garden. I would say if you're interested uh, in getting to work with us and working together in a team to help address something that's bigger and supplement something that's bigger, come join us. You know, send me an email. Keep an eye out for the Cor Unum Garden, which will be placed in the Chick-fil-A and Hogan Dining Hall facilities later this month. And he'll keep the veggies popping up for the people to enjoy for years to come. This has been Emma Pollan with Praxis Magazine. If you are interested in taking part in the Cor Unum Gardens, contact Tony Carbino. Springtime means lots of activities on campus and students and student organizations are beginning to fill up AWOC with a variety of events. Alpha Sigma Tau Sorority is holding its annual fundraiser to promote women's wellness. Members are selling raffle tickets for coffee baskets and other treats. You can attribute to AST's charitable giving year-round. To learn how to help women's wellness, you can visit their website at alphasigmatau.org. The annual fundraiser helps to promote women's wellness. If you are interested in learning more, go to the Duquesne campus link. And before we leave you today, the garden is a perfect reminder that Saturday, April 22nd is Earth Day. If you're looking for one way to mark the day, you can join the Evergreen Environmental Club for a spring cleanup on Earth Day. Dress appropriately. Gloves and trash bags are provided. Please meet outside towers at 11 a.m. for your instructions on how to take part. For extra incentive, free food will be provided. Today, until 2 p.m., Evergreen is handing out free granola as a part of Earth Week activities. Other activities include Evergreen's Waste is Whack. Students from Duquesne and surrounding schools will meet in front of City Hall at 3 p.m. on April 21, 2023 to advocate for the pr protection of our climate. That's it for this edition of Praxis Magazine. I'm Marilise Flavin. Thank you for watching and have a great day.